Hello everyone, welcome back to the Sports Fall Jersey, Joe Archino back here, and it was quite a day in the UEFA Champions League as it often is, Manchester City pulling off a 5-3 win over AS Monaco, and obviously I think you follow that game and the twists and turns, City's on the board first, they go down 2-1, to one. they're able to uh, draw closer, uh, Monaco answers back and then just three straight goals at the end of it by City to really ice the game but it really was an incredible game and I think the two biggest points that you come away from that game are honestly City's biggest efficiency which has been the defending which allowed those three Monaco goals but then also the youth of Manchester City, which has been a driving force behind what Pep Guardiola has been so adamant about building upon. I mean, you look at the score. Sergio Aguero, he has a brace in this game. Two monster goals from him. He probably should have gotten a, awarded a penalty kick. He was actually issued the red card for diving in. To be quite honest, I mean, if you follow Sergio Aguero, if you follow any any Premier League top player, you know that they have their fair share of dives. This was not one of them for Sergio Aguero. I, I think this was one of the ones where he didn't get the benefit of the doubt on it, uh, but City still ends up with the victory. He gets a very important brace, and he's basically said the pressure is on him, and I think for the first time in maybe a long time for Sergio Aguero at Manchester City, he's feeling the pressure like he has to deliver. But when you combine that with the then youth, Officer Raheem Sterling has got the first goal of the game. Beautiful assist from from from, from Leroy Sané in the beginning to get that there. But then Leroy Sané scores the last goal of the game. John Stones scores a goal, and of course John Stones, primarily a defender, for him to be in the right place at the right time at the end of the game and to knock one in. I think that said so much, and Pep was so happy with the youth which continues to really pay dividends for this team and I think the youth has been the thing that's been able to help them get out of the little rut that they were in we kind of looked at Gabriel Jesus when he finally came over from Brazil there was so much excitement for the player of his caliber at only 19 years old he stepped onto the Premier League stage as big as it gets and he just looked like he belonged there all along and certainly now he's most likely going to miss the rest of the season due to injury but once again, what's important to Pep Guardiola? The youth movement. And I think you're seeing again in a game of this magnitude the youth movement being the driving force behind the victory. Now, I do think we kind of overlooked or may perhaps didn't think enough about Monaco in a game like this. I think we all kind of take for granted Ligue 1 sometimes, and rightfully so. I mean, it's been so heavily dominated by PSG, and largely that is European football to an extent outside of the Premier League. It's really been very, very heavy, one-sided. You look at Serie A, Juventus controls that league again. You look at Ligue 1, this is the first time in maybe three, four years where PSG hasn't already already had the title locked up by now but we kind of look at Monaco and they played a very very well game and I think certainly we can't we can't really underestimate them moving any further but you kind of look at a game like this and then I'll kind of will go back to a point that I made earlier and obviously the defending for Manchester City certainly has not been great all season obviously finding a goalkeeper has been a major issue whether you start at the beginning where Pep kind of shipped Joe Hart away brings in Claudio Bravo Claudio Bravo never really it seems like he has been able to fit into the Premier League or make the Premier League adjustment and then of course Willy Caballero has kind of been the man thrown in there and he has been playing much, much better, and he's one of the reasons why City's defense has been playing much better. But certainly this is one of those games where the defending just was not great. But I think a lot of it was also just Monaco really playing well. And I think when we looked at all the round of 16 matchups, they really are all very competitive. I really do think so. I mean, obviously, Bayern Munich just had a thrashing of Arsenal, but for the most part on paper when we looked at all of them, I think for the most part, they all looked very competitive. And Manchester City, historically, I'm talking the last five five years maybe, they haven't always been on the, the most beneficial receiving ends of getting very favorable matchups in this stage of the competition. Uh, but this year, I think things kind of landed much more favorable for them. 
out of all the clubs they could have taken on in the round of 16 to start things off, if you had told me that Monaco it would have been one of them, I would have thought that that's one of the better situations City could find themselves in. And I think certainly right now, the game wasn't easy, and I think at times the City fans basically were holding their breath, but they are able to get it done. And the biggest points, of course, the defending is a problem like it has been all year, but at the end of the day, City has something special with their young players, and when you combine that with the veterans they have, with the David Silva, with the Sergio Aguero, Kevin De Bruyne to me is kind of one of those in-between guys. He has been around the block, but he's still very young, and you just see how much of a difference he makes. But the Raheem Sterlings of the world, of course, John Stones, other players of that, they are really becoming a difference for City. And it's a shame because if Gabriel Jesus was able to go and fit to go, I think Pep would be able to just have a, his wildest dreams out there in front of him. But... He will have Gabriel Jesus out there one day. It just won't be for a little bit while longer. But until the next one, everyone, Jersey Joe Archino here with the Sports Vault. Thank you for listening. You can follow me on Twitter at Joe Archino and on Instagram, Jersey underscore Joe underscore Archino. And I'll catch everybody in the next episode. <laughs>